You have debt because you have competing money priorities and because you haven't yet decided which side you want more. Like right now you want everything. You can't have everything, but you can have anything. And you simply have to decide what's most important to you and put your dollars there. Let me show you how this works. What you'll notice is that today you and future you are going to want to feel the same things. We always want to feel specific things that feel good and not just these, but others, of course. But we oftentimes think that like today we can solve that by spending money. And to solve that in the future, we have to save money today, which of course is not nearly as much fun. And the challenge is that in order to save money to make ourselves less stressed, more secure, more joyous, and more peaceful in the future, that means we have to be more stressed, less secure, less joyous, less peaceful now. Now it's not always like that. It's not like these are finite resources, but oftentimes the choices we have to make with our dollars result in that dichotomy. So if you're trying to dig your way out of debt and create a one month ahead budget because you know that that's gonna help you feel less stressed in the future, that means that in order to make that happen, you have to spend less money now, especially trying to get out of debt. And so all the things that you want right now, like a spa day just represents like shopping on Amazon or shopping at your favorite store, or going out with friends or going to concerts, all the things you might do now that would make you less stressed, you can't do because you're saving that money to be less stressed in the future. And this is all a balancing act. It's not like you should never ever do things to make yourself feel less stressed now because you should only be saving for the future. Like it's not one way or the other. It's a matter of balancing, but the people who end up tipping the scale more in favor of the future are going to get there faster. And while none of this is rocket science, the problem is that you may make some fabulous decision on paper and decide that you're gonna cut back on your spending, but then the weekend arrives and you don't actually do that. Like you know exactly what to do, you just don't do it. And that's because, you know, we're not robots, we have feelings and we act on those feelings. And honestly, we've had a lot of past experiences that lean in favor of like YOLO and FOMO, where we bought, you know, one specific thing and it made us feel a certain way. So let's think about like something that represents home decor, right? So maybe you bought patio furniture for the deck. Um, I did a video about that once. And that made you feel like at home and you were like, okay, this feels like home. It feels like we live here. It feels like stability and security. And I feel calmer because of that and just happier in general. And so that one patio set makes you think like, okay, if I buy a new couch or I buy a new bedroom set or I buy a new dresser, maybe I'm going to feel even more of that security that I want so badly. Or maybe we see friends and family and celebrities on social media where having that thing seems to cause the person to feel these emotions that we desire. So we're like, if we get the thing, if we go on the vacation, like right now, because why wait, right? We're gonna feel joy, because clearly on social media, that's what people feel. And that's not to say going on vacation is something you shouldn't do, even if you're in debt, like that's all your choice. But you have to balance it with like, what if you waited a year and took the same vacation and paid cash? Would you enjoy it even more? Would that be worth it to you? everybody gets to make their own decision about where they're gonna weigh this. So the problem with thinking back on all those times where you were like, I did this and then I felt this, so I'm gonna do more of this, here's the problem. It's this fear of missing out mentality and without realizing it, what we're really thinking is, I love the way I feel, I feel happier, confident or competent or in control or secure or all of these things and we're afraid that that feeling is going to disappear. So our immediate thought is, I need to do more of the thing that created this feeling. So whether we go buy more of this specific thing, or we simply go add other things to the cart and then hit purchase, we are convinced that buying stuff creates the feelings we want. And technically, we're not wrong, but this is a dopamine cycle. Like it's the hamster wheel of desire. It's not about the thing. It's about chasing the high of anticipating the thing. It's way more exciting to, you know, search for the thing, buy the thing, see the email that the thing got delivered to your porch, go home and unwrap the thing, than it is to actually use the thing a month later. And that's why we actually want more of the buying process because it's an anticipation process. But this is terrible for your wallet if all of these things don't fit in your budget all at once. You can have anything you want because you can budget for the one thing or some of the things, but you can't budget for every single thing 
the crosses your mind that you want. And here's the issue. We make the mistake of imagining all the things that our like $500 bonus could buy. We come up with, you know, 10 different possibilities of like, I could spend it on this and I could spend it on this. But we then sort of kind of forget that having all 10 possibilities doesn't cost $500. It costs $5,000. So you do have to choose until you earn more money. That's what real budgeting is all about. It is not about someone else telling you how to spend your money. It's about you telling yourself what's most important to you. And then it's about you following through and spending money in alignment with your priorities, however you decide them. And when you break it all down, it sounds really simple and it is simple, but for most people, it's not easy. And that's why most people have debt. So if you need help, so note and aside, because I feel like somebody is going to comment on this. Work less is not a thing you necessarily buy. And this is not to say that it's bad to want to work less or to work more efficiently or earn more money and then work fewer hours or anything like that. It's simply the idea that if you have tons of debt and you are looking at the ways that you can pay off your debt, there's really two options, right? You can spend less or earn more. And one way of earning more is working more, not working less. So if you wanna pay off your debt and then fund these things and have a retirement, one way of making it happen is to take on a side gig or to work more or increase your rates or something like that, which is the opposite of working less. All right, if you've got questions, drop them in the comments below.